uh, grade 12, choice 2, uh, first lesson starts. I would if I could reach the stupid window handles. But it was designed for some person who is like 7 meters tall. And you've got to remember that I'm the person who fell off the desk on day one this year. Ended up in hospital. Now you want me to climb on the desk again. I was putting up posters. And one of the posters that I put up. Okay, I'm going. Yo, you're not going to reach your 19th birthday if you carry on talking in my lessons. Bongos, the music in your head? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Who's missing here and there? Okay, moving on. Right. Mask up your nose. Okay. Right, ready, steady, go. Okay. Right, let me make this bigger so that Michelle can see it in the sound. Okay. Okay, so I think we finished question three. So it was important for researchers to report failed attempts or negative results because um, so that people can learn from it, um, not repeat them, etc. Okay. Because in fact, in scientific research, in scientific research, you actually not allowed to repeat research. So if you want to do research into XYZ and you're doing a master's degree, you have to go and look and see whether that research has already been done. If it's been done, you're not allowed to do it. Okay, you've got to do new research. So if somebody has failed, then you can work, learn from that. Okay, so the next question was, one is interface and the, the justification for that um, Sorry, guys. Justification for that is that the chromosomes are are not um, distinct as separate units. Okay, you happy with that? Okay. Um, all right, and then the next question was, uh, stage nine is anaphase one, and you've got to say one, you can't just say anaphase. And the reason for that is that the double-stranded chromosomes, or homologous chromosomes, are being pulled towards opposite poles. And then, I think this is where you have to do a drawing. Okay. In anaphase, Michelle, you must 
take cognizance of this. This is the only tape I've looked at, so I know the tools. And that's why I put in a diagram. Is that the, in anaphase, because the chromosomes are being pulled to opposite poles, because the chromosomes are soft structures, as they get pulled to opposite poles, the, you'll see that they go in a V shape. Okay, you must draw them in a V shape. If you draw them straight, then you're drawing metaphase one. Do you all understand what I'm saying? Yes. So then it looks like a line. Yes, yes. Josh? So the, for the diagram, for the one point four, we had to draw metaphase one. I drew metaphase one with chromosomes that are straight. And then it said, the market says it looks like Am, I, no. Am I marking the correct question of yours? I mean, no, not marking. Am I referring to the correct question? Yeah, Is that this question? I'm not. Oh, I see. Sorry. No, I'm doing something wrong here. Yeah. I presume that Michelle's. Because Michelle had a query on her marks. So I looked at that and I saw it says it looks like an abyss. I wouldn't have said it looks like an abyss. Yeah. So, did you also get that same comment? Uh, yeah, because Could your chromosomes were straight. My chromosomes were straight, but I think the issue was that there was too much space, space in between. between the, yeah. Okay, the so just completely ignore this diagram that I slotted in here. As far as I'm concerned, if the chromosomes are straight like that, it is metaphase one, and if they be like that, it is anaphase one. Okay, but I think that what you're saying is that Mrs. Florenza said it looked like anaphase because she was judging the distance between the two. Okay, but I would go on whether they're straight or whether they lead. Be careful though because if the centromere is at the end of a chromosome, then when this is pulled, it's not going to do a double-stranded V like that. It's just going to go like that. Okay. You'll never get all the chromosomes in a cell have a centromere at the end. So you're not likely to see this, but you <laughs> might see it. Don't get that here, yeah. but yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. All happy. Hey. All right. So ignore this diagram, which I so kindly put in for you. In a drunken stupor. Okay. Right. Um, telophase one was photographed ten or eleven, and metaphase one was photographed eight. Okay, for these statements, A was false because you should have written homologous chromosomes, B was true, C was false because it's only in stages. Do you want to move there? No, I can see fine. Are you sure? Okay. Who's missing there? Julia, 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 Julia. Right. C was false because only in stage one to four, and you had to give one of those, um, because the DNA would have replicated during interphase. Okay, D was true, E was true, F was true. The drawing, um, we've discussed the drawing, the arrangement of chromosomes in metaphase one. You had to draw one cell, so you need to draw a circle around it. And the spindle fibers needed to be present or else you got minus one. And you needed to have three homologous pairs of chromosomes, in other words, a total of six, on either side of the equator. And I would not accept along the equator. Okay. Not that you were writing something here, but if I ask you to write a description, you say, along the equator, I will give you naught. On either side of the equator. Sorry, 
Yes, I think so. Yeah, I got a mark on it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then the chromosomes had to be drawn with two chromatids each, and it wasn't necessary for you to label it. Did you guys all head it? Yes. Who know it? Did you all head it? <laughs> guys, it's a giveaway mark. Please head everything in life sciences. Graphs, tables, flow diagrams, timeline diagrams, etc. Matthew! Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, I'm just, I'm just going no, later. When we've done this. Okay. Right, 4.2 hominid skeletons. 4.2.1, uh, Mrs. Plessel, little foot. I think the question asks Stuart Quinte. Yes, sir. And then you have to be really careful, you can't put like any of the other ones like the town child, etc, etc. Okay, 4.2.2 in Australopithecus Africanus. And guys, remember you must underline a scientific name. Okay. Do you know why it's AU here? Do you know why they haven't written Australopithecus Africanus, the whole thing? Guys, I told you this. Sure, I might as well have given birth to you for the amount of time you listened to me. Okay, I said the A word, length of time, number of times. Okay, remember, if you've got a genus name and you've written it once, after that you're allowed to abbreviate it. So if you've written Australopithecus Africanus, after that, you're allowed to write it within that question as A Africanus. Okay, now the reason why the abbreviation here is AU Africanus is because in terms of evolutionary time, there was something that came before the Australopithecus called Ardipithecus. which may or may not be spelled like that. <laughs> okay, and Ardipithecus, because it came first, is generally given the capital A as the abbreviation. So Ardipithecus is generally the capital A, and Australopithecus is quite often written as AU. So that will save you time in a test or exam, but you have to write the, food, the whole word out first. Okay. So you can't not learn how to spell it. And okay. Then you don't need like a key no, that one you don't. Okay. Although if you want to do it as a key, because I hammered it to, into you that you have to do the key, then it's you won't get it wrong. It's just accepted scientifically. Okay. So in Australopithecus Africanus, the foramen magnum is placed more towards the centre in the base of the skull, on the base of the skull and you have to describe it properly. You can't say in the center of the skull, because that means like where the pituitary gland is. Okay, but in gorillas, it's situated much further back. Okay, 4.2.3, a wider bowl-shaped pelvis, and the big toe in line with the others, or parallel with the other toes. Mm. For a question like 4.2.2, once you've stated that, do you not have you don't have to like analyze your thing and say, um, and the positioning at the base of the skull indicates that, like you don't have to. Okay, read me the question. I don't off the top of my head. I don't know the question. It says what evidence from the skull can be used to conclude that Australopithecus africanus is bipedal when compared to the gorilla. Oh, I would have taken it a step further and said that. The, uh, okay. Vertebral column comes straight down. Okay, so it should be. Yeah, safe. yeah. Okay. All right. 4.2.3 a wider bowl shaped pelvis or basin shaped pelvis. Big tone line with the others. What are the advantages? Freed the hands up to carry tools or food or young. That made them able to cover longer distances to fetch food or to hunt prey or to evade 
This must be predators. That must be predators, hey? Eh? Or to see prey. And they could move faster and they expended less energy. Okay, right, everybody happy? Tam, do you want to come and Tino and someone? Do you want to sit there? You're welcome to sit there. I just I didn't want to waste time doing handing out the papers. You can sit there. The desks are clean. Promise, promise. Okay. All right. Then four point two point five. The front of the face is more flattened. Okay. Um, Okay, or a more rounded dental arcade, or a pronounced chin um, present, or a smaller lower jaw, or increased cranium size. Not the whole skull, the cranium, which is the part that houses the brain. And no or very small brow ridges. Okay, any two. And this question did not ask for an explanation. And you should have listed, and you know how I feel about you not listing. Okay, you need to remember to bullet all your points. Okay, right, everybody happy, happy. Okay, all right, 4.2.6. How could you measure the, the volume of the brain? You could fill the skull cavity with water or with sand after plugging all the holes. And then you pour it out into a measuring cylinder to determine volume. Okay. And you had to read it off the graph. And it was between 250 and 550. And it must be a range. And you need to put cubic centimeters. So you lost one if you didn't put cubic centimeters. Just so so for that, would you measure from like the bottom of the cross to the top of the cross? I think I made it from middle to middle. I'm going to measure from middle to middle. I didn't know. Yeah, I said. Okay, this was a past matric exam paper, this particular question. And so I'm presuming that Mrs. Florenza got it from there. So, ma'am, okay. is, is that the only range I said that like, has to be 250 to 5? It looks like that was all she accepted. Okay. And then 4.2.8, between 3.2 and 3.2 million years old. Okay. So not million years ago, because it wasn't asking you a time frame. Okay, dog breeds. Selective breeding or artificial selection. Individuals are chosen by humans to breed based on their characteristics or their traits. But in natural selection, random mutations result in different features. And it involves random breeding between individuals with different features, which are not necessary features that are desired. Okay. So, dogs breed with similar dogs, which could have, dogs are bred with similar dogs, which could have the same harmful characteristics or mutated genes, or could be homos, they could result in being homozygous for harmful features. It increases the chances of dogs having a disorder such as hip dysplasia. Um, note, not diseases caused by micro dis microorganisms. And I told you at the time that, oh, phew, man. Between. 
Tell me, okay, is Eskim load shedding again? Especially in paper two, I see that you struggled to actually finish the paper. And so I'm saying to you very carefully now, do not rule off after questions. Life is too short. And when you write at the beginning of the question, something like question one at the top, because it says that on the question paper, please don't pick up a root and underline that. You're completely wasting time. Okay, do start every big question on a new page because that helps us a lot. But please don't underline, really. Then we know that you're wasting life. Yeah, yes, Akla. Um, would you suggest we start with the essay and then. Okay, so I have very, very fixed and rigid feelings about that. Um, Generally speaking, and Patrick Markin, and I for many years marked the essay for my sins. Um, no, I must tell you, marking the essay is like the end of the world. You know you have offended the examiner if he puts you on marking the essay. In fact, every time I refuse to moderate a paper of his, he says, I'll put you on essays. Um, then what we often find is that the kids who start with the essays write too much and don't finish the rest of the paper. Not always, always, but we do tend to find that. So when you pressurise for time, when you, when you write the essay, you tend to be more concise. And I think you can earn more marks on your two case studies than you can on your essay. So skimping on the case studies because you've run out of time, mm -hmm. but writing a beautiful essay, I think I'd, I wouldn't recommend it. Unless you've practiced lots of past papers where you, you've done it that way around. Okay. I also think, and I may be wrong, but I do believe that you guys... Um, if you've read through the whole paper first, as you have during reading time, and if during reading time you find you don't, let me just do this, otherwise it's going to go off again. Yeah. If during reading time you find you can't read all the sources, then start with reading the sources of the essay rather first. So then, my belief is that the whole time you write the rest of the paper, you've got that essay going on in the back of your head. And sometimes you'll see something in the paper that makes you think of something you can add to the essay. So I would be flipping to the back of my paper booklet and just jotting down words, not doing a plan, jotting down words as you think of things as you're doing the rest of the paper. And I believe you should do the essay second. 
but I'm not saying you have to. I do know that there are, I know of one teacher who's adamant you do the essay first, but he is the only person that I know who says that. How do you feel about it? Why do you want to do the essay first, Dr. Hahn? Okay. Okay. I would. Yes, but the fact. Nothing is. Really? No, they don't give us breaks during the day. I know, it's so harsh. But you go home at 10 o'clock. We go home at 12 o'clock. Okay, that's like 10. Thank you, Carmen. You know I don't care if you. Me? No. Oh, he always so that. <laughs> That's because he always eats. <laughs> Which is not necessarily a bad thing. But I, I need, you see, he doesn't ask me. <laughs> and then when I look, to, look up to ask him a question, he's got his mouth this far. Okay, have you guys all taken photographs? Because you're not taking your paper. <laughs> I think so, don't rock on that chair, but you can't keep the short questions. Yeah, okay. Okay. For addition. No, I'm not going through that many. I'll play the best. Yes, but it's three times thirty kids times four. Okay, choose your two. Yeah. No, write it at the top right hand corner in pencil, please. Okay, I'm not I'm not taking thirty queries from every idiot in the class. Or every intelligent kid in the class. Or Matt Fuller. Okay, but this is more just like something that was just marked wrong. It's literally the correct answer marked wrong. Did the bitch from hell mark it wrong? Sorry? Yeah. I'm not quite sure if you're looking sad. But somewhere there is over there. You see the um, post of note of things? And you also have a writer on here. Post of note of things. Oh, okay. And this name? For the queries, is it a maximum of two? Or Lilith? It depends on how much chocolate you add. <laughs> but now, like, let's say I have five queries. Read my lips. Oh. You have a mask on. Two. Wait, let's say they're all in the same like, question. Can I just say question four then? Instead of pushing four, could not be four. Actually, you know what? I'm not doing that. So, this is preventable. I'll just Did pass it on to him. Well, but you're the king of the hypothetical. Like, let's say you'd say. Sweetie, mother, deep. That one. No, no, no. Which one are you carrying? It's this one. This is Montreal. This one. This one. This one. This one. This one. Thank you. 